Today on Health Trust TV, we invited to our studio Marlene Bjornsrud from Bossy and Carol Danaher from Santa Clara County Public Health to talk about our programs for active girls and how to get your child to eat healthier. Next, Atlanta demonstrates how to involve kids in the kitchen, and our main chef, Angie Ong from the Marriott, cooks a tasty and healthy recipe for kids. Later, Dr. Varner gives advice to parents to connect with their teenagers, and we go hard on our abs with fitness expert Ryan Hughes. All this and more on Health Trust TV. Hi, and welcome to Health Trust TV. I'm Paloma Cano, and today we'll be discussing how a healthy family leads to healthy kids. I'd like to welcome to our studio co-founder of Bossy, Marlene Bjornsrud, and public health nutritionist from Santa Clara County Public Health Department, Carol Danaher. Marlene and Carol, thank you for joining us today. So tell us a little bit about your program from Bossy. Well, Bossy was founded in 2005 in my living room with two members of the United States women's soccer team, Brandi Chastain and Julie Foudy, and a number of women sports advocates who really believe that female athletes have great capacity to be change makers in the world. And we sat together to decide to begin an organization that would take initiative, that would put women athletes into the community to do good work. Wonderful. So what is Bossy doing for Silicon Valley? Well, our signature work uh, is that we've created two programs to have women athletes lead children in high intensity physical activity. One is called Bossy Girls, <laughs> and it's a way for athletes to lead girls in physical activity that isn't based on sport, but is based on good high intensity movement for 75 minutes, one day a week after school for up to 65 girls in high poverty communities. The other work is called Bossy Rollers. It's for kids with physical and cognitive disabilities, also led by female athletes that go on to campuses and work with community of children um, who don't normally have physical activity as a part of their weekly life. And we also use those playgrounds to teach kids with disabilities that they have a place on the playground and they too can be physically active. So Marlene, how can girls and schools get involved in Bossy? Well, Bossy Girls is for girls in third, fourth, and fifth grade. So if a young girl hears about Bossy and wants Bossy Girls to come to their program, she should approach her principal, mm -hmm. who would go to the Bossy website at bossy.org anytime after May 1st to apply for our program. It is free because we secure support from other great organizations outside of Bossy, so neither the school nor the girls are charged a fee to become, to have a Bossy Girls program. That's wonderful. And that's Bossy, B-A-W-S-I dot exactly. org. Exactly. Thank great. you for that. And Carol, can you tell us a little bit about your program? Sure. Um, I'm uh, here to tell you about the five keys to raising a healthy, happy eater class. And this is a parenting class. Mm -hmm. And, you know, anyone who's ever eaten with a child knows that feeding a child is all about parenting. Yeah. And uh, this class came about as a result of just a broad coalition of pediatricians, nutritionists, community organizations mm -hmm. who really realized that um, parents needed help with teaching their children how to be a good and uh, healthy eater. Yeah. And uh, it's much more difficult to teach a child how to eat than to tell a parent, well, get your child to eat this or that. Yeah. That's simple guidance to do. So we developed this class, The Five Keys to Raising a Healthy, Happy Eater. And um, parents from all over the county come to this class, and many of them come in because their child's a very picky eater. Mm -hmm. We had one mom who um, her two-year-old had refused since the time that she transitioned to, to solid foods to eat really anything. And the mom oh, wow. tried to serve her green vegetables and meat and all kinds of food. And this child was just really tough to feed. And so she came into the class. When mm -hmm. the mom came into the class, the child was eating pretty much milk, ice cream, a few items of fast food and lots of candy, you know, mm -hmm. foods. The mom was desperate. She wanted her child to eat. Yeah. And so we worked with that mom so that the mom could be a good teacher. She didn't need help knowing what to feed her child, but how to feed. Yeah. And um, So you so trained the parents? 
We train the parents and we work with parents with kids as young as six months of age when they start solids all the way um, into the preschool years because those are really foundational uh, yeah. years. One of the things we do uh, that we're quite proud of is we help moms really be successful with family meal times because moms like the relationship building that goes on at family meals and we, we hear is that kids may tantrum at meals or may run back and forth to <laughs> yes. the TV. <laughs> and so uh, we show parent, talk to parents that they have teaching skills that they already have and how to apply those to eating. Because eating is like learning to ride a bike. It needs mm -hmm. parents' understanding and uh, the right tools um, and lots and lots of trust that the child's capable of learning. So I always say that with a picky eater who refuses, say, broccoli after mm -hmm. trying that twice, about a quarter of the parents will say, oh, you know, it's not a, that child doesn't like broccoli, don't give her broccoli. It's, um, and if you compare that to how a ch parent might teach a child how to ride a bike, mm -hmm. when a child fails after trying to ride a bike a first time, the parent doesn't take the bike away and say, oh, you can't ride a bike. Yeah. They just keep trying and have trust that the child can learn. And it's that same type of skill that children need to learn to eat well. So Carol, what are the five keys? Oh, I'm glad you asked. Uh, the five keys are five unique responsibilities that children and parents have to create this eating environment in which children can learn. And the parents in this, these five keys are responsible for what food is served to the child and what food comes into the house, of course, mm -hmm. when eating is allowed and where eating is allowed. So that what, when, and where provide a very structured routine for children uh, that helps them learn. And children, keys four and five, are the child's responsibility. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, children are responsible for how much they eat and whether or not to eat from what is served. And what the research shows very clearly is these dual responsibilities of parent and child do allow children to eat the amount that's right for them and helps them learn to like new foods. It that's is also a, a best practice bottle recommended by the American <laughs> Academy of Pediatrics. That's wonderful. So both parents and children have a say in what goes onto their plate. Exactly. So how do parents in Silicon Valley get involved? Well, we, the class is, uh, is free to every parent. Mm -hmm. uh, most, and we do focus on early childhood, but uh, you know, we do have parents of, of school-age children. And uh, there's an 800 number, and that'll be on your website. Okay. Um, and there's a flyer. The class is taught in English, Spanish, and Vietnamese. Oh, wonderful. All over the county, from Gilroy up to Mountain View. Every month, there's several classes. And so there's always a location and a language that'll Great. meet parents' needs. So they can log on and look at our webpage to yes, find out yes. more information. Well, thank you so much for being here today with us. Be sure to stay tuned as Adam will join Chef Angie Ong in the kitchen. But first, let's send it to Elena for another Healthy Choice demo. Hi, I'm Elena from the Health Trust, and today I'm going to talk about staying healthy as a family through cooking together, eating together, and moving together. Let's start with cooking. A great way to cook as a family is to have your kids help make the meal. This not only teaches them lifelong cooking techniques, but also kids who are more involved in making the meal are more likely to eat the meal. To have your kids help, have them make a salad with each dinner. This can start right at the grocery store. Let them choose the fruits and the vegetables to put in the salad. Encourage them to eat a rainbow, meaning choosing fruits and vegetables of many different colors. Once you get back from the store, have them help you wash and dry the vegetables. They can even tear up lettuce leaves like this and throw them right into the bowl. No knives needed. Once you're done cooking together, it's important to eat together. Research shows that families that share dinner together tend to have better outcomes like eating healthier and having kids who get better grades. A game to play at the dinner table could be high-low. This is where everyone goes around and shares the high part of their day, or the best part, and the low part of their day, the worst part. It makes for good conversation. Once you're done eating together, move together as a family. You can make family exercise a habit through using something like this. 
This is a calendar that you can all fill out together with the different activities that you'd like to do during the week. Whenever one actually gets done, reward yourselves with a sticker. This will help you figure out how much physical activity was completed and which days and activities are more likely to happen. That can help you plan. Remember, a family that cooks together, eats together, and moves together stays healthy together. I'm Elena from the Health Trust, giving you the tools to make a healthy choice. Stay tuned as Chef Angie Yong from the Marriott Restaurant cooks a tasty and healthy recipe for kids with fish. And later, Ryan Hughes, our fitness expert, covers some great ab routines. But first, a healthy tip from one of our community members. Hi, I'm Donald Rocha. As a parent, I try my hardest to help my children live healthy lives because I know that their health starts with me. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, research shows that teens engage in fewer health risk behaviors and perform better at school when their parents are actively involved in their lives. If you want your kids to live healthy, successful lives, then lead by example and get involved. Speak to your children regularly about their day, friends, and extracurricular activities. Contact your child's school and find ways for you to volunteer at school-related events, such as dances, after-school sports, and fundraising opportunities. There are ways to get involved. Take the initiative and do it. For more information on parent engagement, visit www.healthtrust.org. How do you do fun, fast, and fresh? I love a nectarine in the morning. I always eat an apple after lunch. I love dipping celery in hummus. For me, it's plums with lunch. Carrot sticks, I love carrot sticks. Next time you do fun, fast, and fresh, treat yourself to real food with real taste. You deserve food this good. This message is brought to you by the Health Trust. Hello everyone and welcome back to Health Trust TV. And today for our cooking segment, we have brought in Chef Angie Yong from the San Jose Marriott. Thanks for joining us today, Angie. Thank you for having me. Great for you to be here. Uh, so what are we gonna be cooking up? What kind of healthy meal are you gonna be showing us how to make today? Uh, today we're just gonna do a really quick uh, pan seared rainbow trout mm -hmm. uh, fish taco. Fish taco. Yeah, with uh, avocado tomatillo salsa. That sounds awesome. Let's get going. Yeah, let's get going. So the first thing we're gonna do today is actually make the avocado tomatillo salsa. Okay. Right, so I have some uh, tomatillos right here. Uh, these are what you, uh, the tomatillos look like. You can find it in most Mexican stores or most grocery markets. They're part of the nightshade family, okay. almost like a, a green tomato. Okay. So today uh, we're just going to use it raw. Most of the time, uh, most people uh, boil it or char it and make it into a puree for a salsa. Right. But today we're just actually going to use it like a chunky uh, okay. version of it. And raw so, kind of keeps a little bit more of the, the vitamin content, right? Absolutely. So a little bit healthier. Healthier, more fiber, all that good stuff. Great. So to that, I'm just going to add um, some avocados, which I've already split here. So, so we just get some good healthy fats in the avocados, yeah, right? Yeah, high in monounsaturated fats. Perfect. So basically, we're just going to gently uh, dice the avocado. Okay. Try not to go through the skin, because I've done that before. Yeah, that can not feel too great, I guess. I huh? <laughs> yeah. And then you're just going to take a spoon, and you're just going to scoop all that avocado delicious avocado in there. Okay. So to here I have about a cup of diced tomatillo and about a cup of uh, avocado. Mm -hmm. We're going to add a little bit of about two tablespoons of really fine red onion, two tablespoons of really fine jalapeno, Okay. about three tablespoons of lime juice. And if you like it a little spicier, you can definitely add a little bit more. Okay. Uh, Pepper to that. And so how much will this be serving? How many people is this going to be? Really depends on the people who okay. top all so. that okay. stuff, right? like me who likes a lot yeah. of avocado. You know, okay. this probably will uh, feed about six tacos or, you know, um, okay. but seven or eight. So enough here, for a family. Okay. Enough for a family Perfect. of two or three. If you, your family likes more, then I would make more. Okay. And then I'm just going to really fine chop some cilantro real quick and add that to the bowl. Perfect. I love cilantro, especially on tacos. Yeah, it's r great flavor. Yeah. Fresh. Right. All right. So if we wanted to make it a little bit more spicy, do we? can we add any types of 
you know, t typically in the, the guacamole I make, it's, it's add some chilies and stuff like that. So totally, if you like uh, more, like this one, I actually deseed it the yeah. jalapeno, so you can, you can even add, yeah, right? add it. Okay. Yeah. To that, I'm just gonna add a little bit of oil to that. Is that any specific type of oil or? Uh, just olive oil. Just is olive good. oil. Huh? Okay. A little bit of pepper and a little bit of sugar. Okay. And we're just gonna gently mix it up. And the best thing I can recommend is actually just taste as you go, mm -hmm. right? And just make sure you have enough salt, enough sugar, just whatever you like. Okay. So we're just gonna let that set aside. Okay. In a pan that I have here, we're just gonna sear the rainbow trout real quick. Okay, so this is a quick, easy meal then, huh? So totally. Just, okay. I have a little bit of a spice mixture here. It's a fish taco. For the fish taco, it has chili powder, cumin, paprika, a bit of coriander. Okay. You want to season the other side as well on the fish, both sides. Now you can use other types of fish for these tacos Absolutely. as well, right? If you are trying to introduce uh, your children um, to fish or seafood, uh, rainbow trout, striped bass are all really good options because mm -hmm. um, they're really mild yeah. and they're really flaky not too fishy. Yeah. Um, so for a kid, you know, you're like, oh my God, I don't like the taste. This is a good fish to start them off with. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. So this fish really takes real quick, two minutes on each side, and you're pretty much done and ready to serve. Sounds good. So I'm gonna just, I've already made some fish that I already cooked on this side here. All right, so that's what it turns out to look like, huh? Yeah, and I por I portioned the fish real quick. Okay. Because, I mean, you don't need to have a whole fish unless you have really huge tacos. Sure, sure. But, um, and to that, I'm just gonna heat up my corn tortilla. All right. In the pan real quick. And we're pretty much ready to roll. All right, starting to come together. I'm anxious to taste it. Yeah, I hope. I'm a big fish tastes... taco guy. So. <laughs> You're a big fish taco anything guy. Anything Mexican, actually. Actually, anything uh, with some spice and some tortillas. Perfect. That's my favorite. And it's really easy to make, uh, flavorful, really healthy. Yeah. And you can bring your kids in and yeah, make it with you. Yeah, yeah. I think quick and easy is, is important, especially when you're cooking for a family, right? Absolutely. All right. So I'm heating up my corn tortilla over there. Mm -hmm. Once it's all nice and warmed up, I'm just gonna get a little piece of fish or two right okay. there. So I usually bash up my avocados. You left them kind of chunky. That looks really it, nice. Yeah, it's up yeah. to you. Yeah, you yeah. Know, a little if bit you, easier too, Yeah, right? totally. It's yeah. up to you. I mean, if you like it mashed, smashed, diced. Mash away, As long right? as you're happy. Yeah, yeah. And your kids are eating all this stuff. Okay. That's all that matters. So we're gonna. What other kind of toppings did you have over here? So yeah. to this, I'm just gonna add a little bit of uh, shaved um, cabbage, just cabbage. for a little bit of crunch again. Perfect. And a little bit of more cilantro. And there you go. Perfect. A little fish. Time taco. to try it out. Time to try all it right, out. Let's give it a go. And again, if you want to use, you can use any fish. If your kids like salmon, mm. you can use salmon. Um, any toppings, extra toppings, if you want cotija cheese, you can add the cotija cheese. So whatever you like and whatever your family likes. Perfect. Well, yeah. that was amazing yeah. for me. Yeah. Uh, we want to thank Chef Angie from the San Jose Marriott. Stay with us because coming up next, we have our fitness expert, Ryan, who's going to be going through some great new exercises for you. But before we get to Ryan, we're going to send it to Dr. Werner as she goes over a very important health message for all of us at home. Hi there, and welcome. I'm Dr. Jane Barner from the Palo Alto Medical Foundation, here with the doctor's message. If you are the parent or caregiver of a teenager, you can probably remember the exact day when your bubbly, talkative little child suddenly began grunting single word responses to your questions, when eye rolling, deep sighs, and frank silence became part of almost every interaction. Well. Much of this is part of a teen's normal growth and development, but here are some strategies for improving communication with the teen in your life. Make time to talk. The combination of hectic schedules and the wide availability of portable electronics make communication challenging 
if not impossible. Prioritize it by carving out a little face time each day, whether that's having a meal together, a bedtime chat, or even a car ride. Set up some parameters. No phones, no earbuds, TVs off. Many teens activate at night, and while they've been quiet all day, at bedtime, you can't get them to stop talking. Ask them about things that are important to them, like their friends, the music they listen to, even their classes at school. Their world is not necessarily the same as your world, and that's okay. It's just really important to understand what's happening in their lives. And speaking of asking questions, ask to understand, not to judge. Questions like, are you planning to actually study for the test this time? Highlight past failures and can put your teen on the defensive and your opportunity is lost. Instead, try asking something like, what can I do to ensure that you have enough time to study for your test? The difference here is subtle, but the message is clear that you are there to support them. And at this point in their lives, they really need that. Avoid broad generalizations like, you never, or you always. These statements will also put your teen on the defensive. Instead, simply make the expectation clear. Try this. I expect you to take your plate to the sink after dinner. It is part of being a good citizen in this household. I'll continue to remind you until you remember yourself. And if I forget, I expect you to remind me. Finally, celebrate successes, even the small ones. Our teens often put on their toughest face, but deep down inside, they are often scared and terribly insecure. If they do just a little bit better on a test, or they finish a book, or they do a good job cleaning up their room, even if you had to remind them, or they make an assist in a game, whatever it is, make a big deal about it. They'll probably look at you, shrug their shoulders and say, uh, it's really no big deal. But I promise you, they love to hear it. Again, I'm Dr. Jane Varner with The Doctor's Message. Coming up next is Ryan Hughes, our fitness expert, covering some great ab routines. But first, a healthy tip from one of our community members. Hi, I'm Darcy Green. Have you ever mapped out your family's health history? Now's the time. Your family's health history is comprised of the things you have in common, such as genetics, exercise habits, and the food you eat. Mapping out your family's health history can help you prepare for and prevent certain ailments because many genetic disorders first become obvious in childhood. Knowing the history of a genetic condition can help find and treat the condition early. To learn more ways to collect your family's health history, go online to My Family Health Portrait. For more information on family health, visit www.healthtrust.org. Hi, my name is Ryan Hughes, and today we're gonna to run you through an ab workout. Everybody's favorite part, so, Abs are a little bit tougher to train because there's some misconceptions with abs. A lot of people run through them too quickly, focusing more on quantity rather than quality. So we're gonna run through an ab workout showing you how to breathe, how to perform the exercises properly, and proper rep ranges. So let's start off. We have a bench here. You can do these on a bench or on the floor. So we'll start off with a simple crunch. So you're gonna lie flat on the bench, feet up, if you're doing these on the floor, just the same thing. You just keep your feet up on the floor, knees down, and hands, you can put them next to your head, cross them against your chest, but what you don't want to do is put them behind your neck, because then you have a tendency to pull your neck instead of using your abs to pull you up. So I'll cross mine, we'll come up, get a good squeeze, breathing out as you come up and contract the abs, back down, so breathe in, and out on the top, and in, and out. Focus on that squeeze at the top, 
You don't have to come all the way up. The goal is just to really contract the abs as best you can. There's no need to actually pull yourself all the way up to your knees. So again, we'll stay down, and come up, contract, and back down. And come up, breathing out, contracting the abs, and back down. We'll shoot for 15 to 20 reps on the crunches, and then we'll move on to our next one here, which can again be performed on a bench or on the floor. These are gonna incorporate the legs as well. So you'll lie down, Hold on to the bench if you have one. If not, hands underneath if you're on the floor. I'm on a bench, so I'll hold on to the bench here. We'll straighten the legs out and we'll pull them in just like that. And out, get a good stretch and in. Contract the abs, squeeze. And out and in. You bring them in again. When you're contracting, you're breathing out. Legs straight, get a good stretch, contract, breathe out, and in, and breathe out, just like that. Same thing here, 15 to 20 reps, and we'll go three to four sets of each. Let's move on to our third exercise now, which is gonna be some rope crunches. You're gonna use a rope attachment right onto this cable here. Use a weight that's moderate to heavy because you want to use enough weight to counteract your body weight on this movement. You're going to come down onto your knees here. The rope is going to be pulled down towards the back of your head and you're going to keep it there. And then all we're going to do is crunch down, bringing your elbows to your knees. So you want your elbows to your knees on this one. And down. As you contract, you breathe out down, up, get a good stretch, elbows to knees, breathe out. We'll go 15 to 20 reps on here, three to four sets. And just to recap, we had the crunches, can be done on the floor or the bench. We also had the leg raises, which can be done on the floor or the bench. And our final exercise, which is our rope crunches. Everything is to be done at 15 to 20 repetitions, three to four sets. My name is Ryan Hughes with Health Trust TV, reminding you to stay healthy. that's our show for today. Remember everything you've learned and more can be found on our website at www.healthtrust.org. Visit the site and join us next time as we bring Silicon Valley the latest in health. Thanks for watching Health Trust TV.